Hello, I'm Chris Sarley, Investment Research Analyst at Fund Calibre, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Jared Anderson, Investment Manager for Japanese Equities at Bailey Gifford. Jared, thank you for joining us. Thanks, thanks very much for having me, Chris. Um, over half of the, uh, the Bailey Gifford Shin Nippon Investment Trust is invested in what seem to be sort of disruptive and rapid growth businesses which look to take advantage of structural changes in Japan. Um, how has the pandemic impacted those businesses specifically? And could you give us perhaps a couple of examples? Yeah, sure. So um, obviously the, the situation on the ground has, has caught a lot of um, corporates off guard the world over, um, and, and Japan is, is no exception. Um, the reality is that in Japan, you have lots of, of businesses that just don't have the sort of systems and processes in place to, to deal with things like remote working. So things like physically stamping contracts just isn't, isn't viable with everyone working from home. And the Japanese economy remains you know, very wedded to, to things like paper and, and very predicated on the idea of everyone being in one, in one place. So there's lots of challenges for the corporate sector um, at large. What's encouraging for, for us in the small cap area is the number of businesses we're seeing trying to address some of these, some of these challenges. So deploying technology and the like to make other businesses that bit more, bit more flexible, bit more agile. So, so a good example there of a company that, that we have a holding in is a company called Bengoshi, which is one of the leading online legal portals in Japan. And it has a, it has a contracts business, which essentially allows for contracts and documents to be digitally signed and stored that strengthens compliance, that saves time. So in, in that sort of area, in the kind of enterprise software, enterprise tools area, you know, we've, we've seen demand being being pulled forward over the, over the last um, few months, and that's that's an area that's well represented in the in the portfolio. And a similar story on the on the consumer side, where it's been online businesses winning winning new fans with with people um, stuck at home. So we have a, a holding in in a company called Demai Can, which is one of the big two online food delivery platforms in Japan. And again, very similar story there in terms of a, a favorable demand environment. So for the, the most part, the, the, the portfolio holdings have been performing remarkably, remarkably well. And I think that's you know, really a, a function of the type of businesses that, that we hold. We're looking for businesses that are disrupting established industries, often with, with a sort of new product or service offering and I think the challenge for many of many of these businesses is not so much on the product or service side. It's more getting that window of opportunity whereby potential customers are rethinking, you know, how, how they how they do things, how they operate. And I think the the you know the, the situation that we've seen over the over the last few months is is perhaps such a such a window. And um, there's obviously a few longer term trends that people often associate with Japan. Uh, one of which is sort of the aging population coupled with the, the shrinking workforce. Uh, Japan has been looking to tackle sort of what's known as the silver market for a few years now, but maybe perhaps tell us how smaller companies are sort of trying to do so and give us a couple of examples there if possible. Yeah, so I, I, think, there's, I think there's two parts to, to that question. One is the, the sort of time-saving, resource-saving products and services that small cap businesses in, in Japan are, are coming up with. And the second thing, perhaps a bit more a bit more muted, but no less important, is the way in which these businesses operate themselves. Um, so, so sort of taking these these two things in in turn, um, we know that Japan is is running out of of working age people. Its unemployment is is down at sort of two percent. There's more um, jobs than there are applicants, etc. So the question for us is, you know, what do these things mean on a on a sort of five 10-year um, view, and, and we think it, it, it means that businesses will have to pay more attention to weeding out some of these inefficiencies, um, paying more attention to technology on offer, something that Japan Inc. has been, been quite bad at doing um, over the years. And more honest on, on businesses that are willing and able to put this put the sort of customer experience um, front and center, so reducing um, friction, aiding, aiding transparency, and the like, and you know they, these are sort of um, key themes, key themes in the in the in the portfolio. 
Um, I want to go back to the uh, Shinipon Investment Trust again. Um, e-commerce, software, and healthcare are sort of three sectors that you've been finding a lot of attractive opportunities this year. Could you perhaps talk us through the attractions of each and maybe, again, give us some examples given the sort of uncertain backdrop we have? Yep, yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you say, three three big pillars in, in the portfolio and, and three areas where we see long-term growth drivers that, that are attractive and opportunities that are that are sizable. So, so taking the three in turn, um, Japan is very much behind the curve when it comes to e-commerce. So, you know, less than 10% of retail transactions in Japan are, are online. Cash remains the dominant medium of exchange. And our very sort of unsophisticated view is that, that over time, the pendulum there um, shifts more towards online. Uh, so a good example of a, of a holding we have, we have there is a company called um, GMO Payment Gateway, which essentially provides the underlying infrastructure, which facilitates um, online payments, cashless, cashless transactions. Um, software was the, the second area that, that you mentioned and sort of touched on that a, a little bit already, but the key contention is very much that businesses in Japan will have to do more with less. So that means better managing people, data, processes. Um, and a, a holding that, that we have um, that, that fits the bill on that front is a company called Saibozu, which is an enterprise software business. It, it essentially empowers um, users without any coding background to build data management workflow applications. It's, it's, um, it's actually being used by some um, local authorities in, in Japan at the moment to, to deal with the, the current um, pandemic in terms of sharpening their, their, their response and their analysis to the data that they're, they're getting in. So that's one that we're, we're very excited about. And then finally, healthcare. Obviously, you know, Japan's population is, is aging, it's relatively well off, so that, that makes this uh, uh, you know, an interesting area for us, for us to look at. And I think we're, we're increasingly seeing tech-savvy businesses in this area really trying to take dead weight out of, the, out of the healthcare system. So we have a holding in a company called M3, um, and, and its core business connects doctors with pharmaceutical representatives so it frees up doctors' um, time. It makes information more relevant, more accessible to them. Really a win-win for, for all parties concerned. So three, three broad areas that, that, we're, um, that we're very very keen on in terms of the longer-term longer, longer term drivers and real, real growth pockets in Japan. And um, could I just finish by maybe getting an outlook on Japanese equities from you? I mean, is your optimism tempered? Is, it, is there bullishness or are you a bit wary of a second lockdown? Yeah, well, I think I think we're you know very upbeat on small cap Japan at large, and and really that's a function of the number of businesses that we're seeing with real ambition to take on established industries, um, and and the manner that they're doing that is is important as well. So you know businesses that are more flexible, more entrepreneurial, more willing to take on risk, thinking you know years and, and decades out. You know, we, we think those are the sorts of businesses that will be on the on the right side of, of change over the over the long term, and that's you know irrespective of, of what happens in, in the near term with another lockdown or or whatever whatever else. You know, these, these aren't things that we we pretend we we can predict. That's great, Jared. Thank you very much for spending time with us today. Thanks, Chris. And for more information on Bailey Gifts expertise in Japanese equities, please visit funcaliber.com.